my producer Beatrice is molesting me in the studio to be on standby and be vigilant always and I'm trying to be keen. Of course, we want to talk about, you know, what's happening as far as international football is concerned. It's countdown to FIFA World Cup coming up next in a few days' time, of course, starting this particular month of November until December and it's getting televised live on our mother channel, KBC channel. And I'm still here with Ken Andrews to get into the nitty of what we expect as far as uh, FIFA World Cup is concerned, the most coveted uh, football global competition set to take place, bringing together 32 teams set to take part, of course, defending champions France still in contention to challenge for the title they bagged last time when it happened in Russia 2018. Ken, of course, let's get into it. The FIFA is the hype, you know, uh, up to the billing. I think this is a very unique one because, <laughs> you know, it's, the World Cup is a couple of weeks away, but people seem to be more hyped about the Premier League and, and the leagues and the Champions League because, you know, they are so close this time that, you know, the moment the Premier League stop, stops playing <coughs> or stops showing, you jump into the World Cup. So, you know, obviously there is hype for the World Cup because, you know, the teams that are there, uh, the, 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 the great feeling amongst the, the fans is that this will be the World Cup the last World Cup for many, many great players, you know. Yes. Messi, Ronaldo, Luis Suarez, you know, people see it as their last chance at, at, at glory. So, you know, who will take it out of, the, you know, the ones who are coming to the end of their career? And of course, let's talk about the favourites. You know, pundits have been tipping teams to win this World Cup, you know, with some of them rooting for France, Brazil, saying Nima and Vinicius are in top form and their partnership up front will do magic for five-time World Cup champions. Which team are you rooting for? Uh, I'd say, uh, for me, my favourites are Brazil. You know, if you just look at the squad that they have and how they play, and, and uh, you know, history, you know, history also backs them because they are the, the greatest country in terms of the World Cup. But if you look at them this year and how they've been playing, even in their qualifiers, I think Brazil has been, has sort of blend, you know, no matter who plays, because sometimes we see a lot of changes in their midfield. And, you know, at a time where Fred was not a favorite at Man United, he walked into the Brazil uh, lineup and, you know, he's produced results. So you look at their team from back to front, the goalkeeping department, defense, you know, Thiago Silva is 37, but still uh, going strong, Marquinhos, you look, and up to front where you find Neymar, Vinicius, Gabriel Jesus, Firmino, and the form that those guys have been hitting for their clubs, this, this movement, even Martinelli might be an option, you know. You just have to say that uh, Brazil are, are really, really good fa favourites for this World Cup. Most of the high-profile players even are not uh, guaranteed of, you know, a first-team yeah. place yeah. of, you know, the Brazil national team or probably being called yeah. by the head coach. Because in the midfield, I see the legs of Casemiro, Fred, and, yeah. you know, Fabinho, Fabinho, who has been an integral factor as far as Liverpool is concerned. So it might be challenging for, yeah. you know, the head coach to get to, you know, select and pick who are the most suitable players to start. Yeah, because even if you look at the form of other players who might not get into that midfield at the moment, you look at someone like uh, Bruno Guimaraes. Yes. You know, he's been really, really great. And even Lucas Paqueta for West Ham, they've been playing great football. But when they break into the midfield or the attacking midfield area of the pitch, you know, it's, it's really hard to see. And also, you look at their wingers right now, you know, who, who will get the call? Will it be Martinelli or there's also Anthony? You know, there, there are a lot of players that Brazil can call who are on form at the moment. But, you know, that's never the case because it's a limited squad that has to go. But whichever the number, I feel like Brazil have the best chance of winning the World Cup. Ken, personally, I will not lie. I will be straight and, uh, you know, honest, I'm rooting for three Lions. Uh, <laughs> England led by Gareth Southgate. The team has yeah. been, you know, dismally... Uh, performing at the global stage during yeah. qualifying, yeah. they showed track record. They saw they show they can they got what it takes to perform yeah. at you know the elite global competition. Despite yeah. the fact that in Russia, I think they got eliminated by Croatia at yeah. the semi final stage. They yes. were looking forward and showing promise yeah. to get to see what their you know predecessors did in 1966. That yeah. was the last and first time. Uh, England mm. lifted uh, FIFA World Cup. But this time round, you know, it's been confusion galore, yeah. uh, even regarding squad selection, because yeah. Gareth Southgate seems undecided and mm. he's not sure who to call, who to left behind. Yeah. But 
at least Harry Maguire is guaranteed <laughs> <laughs> to start at the back line. But yeah. now, alongside who? I think if you look it, at it from an England perspective, Maguire, Stones, Walker, you know, I think that has worked for Southgate at times. So starting past. back three. Yeah, back three. But you know, there's a big doubt on Kyle Walker, who's not yet ca even come back to the Man City. He's still under the doubt area. But Maguire, if fit, I think he's been a player who has served. For Garrett the national Southgate. team, he's doing very well, unlike yeah. at club level. Yeah, for, for Gareth Southgate, if, even if you look at the biggest games that he's had, it, that's the World Cup semi final in 2018 and also last year when they had the Euro finals. You yes. know, Maguire was very important for them throughout the tournament and throughout. Even in qualifying, you know, he's a very key player for them. He's even captured him at some time. You know, I think the big question is moving forward for Gareth Southgate because he receives a lot of questions that if he's playing the back three, why does he always have Rice and Calvin Phillips sitting ahead of the back three? And it's also, it, it's already too defensive, you know. That's the criticism he's been receiving. And also moving forward, uh, you know, uh, the wingers especially now and, uh, you know, Raheem Sterling has been blowing hot and cold, you know. You don't know what he's going to give, but he's been playing really well for Gareth Southgate. And also, you know, you look at things right now, you know, Marcus Rashford has been in great yes. form for Man United. So, and he has, he was called to the 2018 World Cup and he also went to the Euro. So, will he receive a call-up? And with Bukayo Saka falling out of the game last weekend, you know, it's a really big question on him. He's, he's a doubt. So, we, we, we shall wait and see. But I feel like he's the coach with the most pressure. And plenty of, you know, alternatives to select from. Because as yeah. we speak, James Madison yeah. is there. Uh, Jack form. Grealish yes. is, is also there. Mason Mount, Phil Foden, of course, is yeah. in top form and is guaranteed yeah. of selection to start. Yeah. 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 But to now, start. the worrying factor is that both Rhys James and uh, you know, Ben okay. Chilwell yeah. are out injured. Uh, would they stand test of time to be fit before selection? And are they, are they you know, pivotal to England's case to you know, perform well at the World Cup? I think for the case of for the case of Rhys James, of uh, Ben Chilwell, I, I don't think he's that pivotal because, you know, Luke Shaw, if fit, he's Gareth Southgate's number one always. And we are seeing how he's playing at Man United. He's, he's, he's fought the battle against Malaysia and he's won and convinced everyone that he's, you know, he's, he's, <laughs> he's the best fullback at the club because you see how he's playing, you know, it's, it's really amazing. So if Luke Shaw is fit, I think Gareth Southgate will be okay. And also for the other side, I think... If they were playing a back four and, and Walker had to be a right back, I think that's when they would have missed a right back. But you know, you still look at Kieran Trippi on the other side, you know, he's a great option. And also, there's also the if you feel like it's a back three and it's well protected at the back, you can also have Alexander Arnold there, who's not that great he defensively. He has not been favorite for Gareth yeah, Southgate, yeah. though. Yeah, but you know, he gives a different kind of dynamic. His, his passing is, is totally world class and his crosses are usually very accurate and also set pieces so you know he might be an option but Rhys James will be a bigger miss than Ben Chilwell I feel. Let's talk about defending champions France despite the fact that they will be missing the services of you know world class Paul Pogba who yeah. moved from United to Juventus and he has not much of football because of yeah. injury yeah. and you know Colo Kante is also yeah. a doubt yeah, I think for mm. France at the World Cup. Yeah I, Kante, Kante is out of the World Cup him and Pogba I think that that's, uh, they'll have to give a new midfielder a chance. Uh, you, you look at the one that they had in 2018, uh, Pogba, Matuidi and Kante, you know, it was a really, really industrious midfield who'd run for everything and they'd always boss every game. But right now, you know, it's also opened a window for the young talent to state their claim. And Kamavinga. To, to, yeah, Eduardo Kamavinga and uh, Aurelien Chaumeni, you know. Those two have been great for Real Madrid. Obviously, they're playing around great players with Cruz and Modric, but even looking at Chaumeni, aside from the first game he had this season, he's been a great, great, great uh, replacement for Casemiro because of how he's been playing. Kamavinga, I don't think he's there yet. I don't think he's, he's ready to be that Pogba of a team and, and really carry the team going forward. But he can get a chance to be on the plane due to injuries to the, other, to the, other, to the two main midfielders for France. Considering World Cup is a, an elite global football competition that needs you know, vast experience, do you think the two... Uh, despite the fact that they have done very well, their partnership at Real Madrid has been solid. Mm. Will they rise to the occasion? Ooh, I, you know, that's the hard question because I think it's a challenge. Even though the up front yeah. looks very well. Anton mm. Griezmann has not been in good form at club mm. football level, yeah. but you know, Karim Benzema yeah. having one Ballon d'Or, having even done Giroud. exceptionally well at Real Madrid, mm. alongside Olivier Giroud. Yeah. So, which yeah. means their attacking department is well sorted. The back line? 
the back line, I think, uh, is, uh, Rafael Varane was called back from Man United. He, he went back to France to start his rehabilitation and maybe he's still in doubt, but he maybe has started his training for the World Cup because he's not in UK with United and France really, really need him. Jules Koundé, is he a yeah. Frenchman? Yeah, yeah, but, but you know, you look at him and how he's been playing at Barcelona, you know, He's not there, there yet. And, you not know, sure. Yeah, not sure. But uh, I feel like Upamecano yes. can get his chance. He's been doing great with Bayern Munich. He's a great ball-playing midfielder. Alongside Varane, great experience. And also uh, Benjamin Pava and yes. Lucas Hernandez. And he did very well at the 2018 FIFA World Cup in Yeah, Russia. yeah, yeah. And the, the great thing about Pava and Lucas Hernandez is they can also shift in as centre-backs other than just being right-back and left-back. So I feel like defensively, they'll have a great... Uh, a great uh, team to, to carry them forward. Even the goalkeeper, you know, they've had a lot of keepers playing great football, but their biggest doubt route will be the AC Milan goalkeeper, Mike Magnan, who's out injured, is still a doubt, but, uh, you know, uh, that will not be a worry to them. Yeah. People are talking about all sorts of favourites, mentioning, you know, France, talking about Brazil, but, you know, forgetting to uh, mention about 2014 FIFA World Cup champions in mm. Germany. Mm. Aren't they, you know, a worrying factor during this edition? I don't think they are. I, I, I honestly don't think they are that great because you look at the number of high-profile German players out there in the world right now, you know, they, they are not the same as the 2014 squad. When we had Sami Kedira, yeah, yeah, Mesut Ozil, yeah, the likes of Parma Matrasaka. Yeah, and you see the only guy remaining from that is Tony Cruz and... Uh, one person you can say who has that top, top quality to still run the midfield with him, Joshua Kimmich, he can do it. But you look at them up front, Gnabry has been really poor for Bayern this season. Uh, Timo Van has gone out injured uh, on Wednesday, Champions League. Kai Havertz is not flying out flying that well for Chelsea. You know, they are really, really understacked up front and you... you you look at who... Timo Werner is their striker. Yeah, Timo Werner has been a favourite, their striker. He's been starting games, but... He went off injured uh, in Leipzig's game on Wednesday. Yeah, so I think up front they are not that well, but you look at their defense and their midfield, they can make something of it. Yeah. Because most of you know the mm. heavyweights for France, you know, retired from active football. You yeah. know, Philip Lam. I think it was it was a quality squad back yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, Mario Gotze, Mario Gomez mm. up front. You know, Lucas Podolski yeah, yeah, playing yeah. good quality football for. Yes. Germany yeah. Yeah, at the global stage. But let's talk about, you know, the minos and chances of, you know, those who are not, who are being written off to yeah. call an upset. Canada has qualified for the first time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Qatar also playing back at home. Will the host tag play to their advantage? No. <laughs> <laughs> if you just look at it, uh, the quality that is there. Yes. Yeah, I think Qatar in their first game, uh, he, uh, I don't know who they face, but I, I feel like their group is a really tough one. I, I know moving forward, they'll, they, they'll want to make something of being the host, but I don't think that will work. Even if they make it past the group stage and into the round of 16, you meet the likes of Uruguay there, who, you know, hard to play, Argentina, Portugal, Spain. The, the guys who will make it out of the group stage, who are expected to make it out. I think it will be very hard for them. And also, if you look at Minos, I think uh, Canada... Canada have, have had a really great qualification. They've been playing really well. You know, people are used to North America, United States being everything, but they upstaged United States. They played well. They, they also upstaged Mexico, who, are, who people say are better than the U.S. You know, they, they managed to get good results out, out of both games, uh, home and away against them. And I think, uh, you know, you look at people like Alfonso Davis in the squad, you know, you have to expect uh, at least something. I don't think they'll, they'll go to win it. You know, obviously the... the Quality differ, difference moves as the game progresses, you know, difference in quality increases. You yeah. know, so I don't think they're going to win it, but it's great because, you know, they're guaranteed to be in the next World Cup as, as hosts. So this might be a good advertisement of the game for, for their home fans. And of course, talking about Minos, of course, we're going to get patriotic and root for our African compatriots led by the five countries that he said to represent the continent. Of course, in... Senegal, who are the Africa Cup of Nations champions, and you know, Sadio Man has been in blistering form, and yeah. he has shown the whole world that he got what it takes. He was 
you imagine us run up yeah, during run up. Ballon the Ballon d'Or which was won by Karim Benzema of course Egypt is also ah, no, 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 no 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 Egypt it's Morocco uh, eh, alongside Ghana and Cameroon and Cameroon and, and Tunisia and Tunisia so yeah. two representatives from North Africa Tunisia and Morocco yeah. Three from West from Africa, West. Yeah. Uh, Senegal, Cameroon, Ghana, and Ghana, and Cameroon. I yeah. don't know. Are they also getting classified under Minos or they can do what they have done before, probably surpass what they have done before? You remember in 202 World yeah. Cup when Senegal yeah. with the likes of Diof yeah. caused magic and pulled great surprises, yeah. beating you know France and getting to the quarterfinal. Yeah. How, how is that possible this time round? I think this time round is, is, is Africa's best chance of moving out of uh, the quarterfinals or having more African teams uh, move from the group stage yes. or into the quarters or even one into the semis. Because you look at the squads that are, are there at display. Uh, number one, you look at Senegal, you know, the quality they have up front from even defence. The goalkeeper plays for a top six club in UK. <coughs> Uh, the midfielders, Cheku Kuyate, they play in the Premier League. And up front, Sadio Mane, you know, someone who plays best, uh, the best club in the Champions League at the moment. You look at Bayern Munich, you know. But then, you know, you look at Ghana and what they've done with bringing, you know, foreign players into the team. Because you see people like Tariq Lamptey, uh, Inyaki Williams, uh, you know, they've switched from the, their countries in UK. And they've sort of even at had to be yeah. You know, national team football. Yeah, they all want to go to the World Cup. And you know, that's, you know, the, 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 the local or the, the players who played for Ghana for many years may feel a bit down of this, but it's good for them because it's quality coming this way, you know. Wilfred Zah even did the same. When yeah. he, he got assured that, you know, mm. at the England level, mm. he's not guaranteed of yeah. playing. He switched to Ivory Coast. Yeah, he went to Ivory Coast, you know, it's... Not going that well for him, but you know, <laughs> for Ghana it's a different case because you look at the players that, especially up front, you know, someone like Inyaki Williams who's never got his, ch his chance in Spain, but you know, he he's holds the record for, I don't know, 250 games yes. in a row without injury, you know, a really, really crucial player he might be for them. Tariq Lamptey, you saw him against Chelsea last weekend, amazing, amazing player, so I think Ghana can have a chance, but our best chances might be the, the, the guys from the north. Because technically, you look at Morocco and also Tunisia, they are really, really great teams. And you were talking about, you know, every Sally Aron and favorite to lift the title. We omitted Argentina. Lionel Messi playing his last World Cup and so is Cristiano Ronaldo for Portugal. I think they are 36 and 7 respectively. Mm, yeah. Can they live on a high? Oof, it's very it's harder for Portugal than Argentina because Argentina have a really really great squad also. But post Portugal also have a great squad. But you look at how Argentina played in the, the finalismo against Italy. They they blew them apart. Even if Italy tried to yes, have yes, their yes. big players there, Argentina completely blew them apart. Even if you look at their Copa America journey and their qualifiers journey, you know. It will still be a thing for Argentina. I, I feel like after Brazil, Argentina might be the next best team, you know. But Portugal, you know what, what they have that other teams do not have is players that can fight, players that can be, you know, dogged. You know, people like Bruno who can run all over the pitch. Bernardo. Yeah, Bernardo. They can get everything in their midfielders. You look at someone like William Cavallo. You know, there are players who can really, really try to get a result for Joao Coutinho still plays for them. Uh, Moutinho, Moutinho, yes. Moutinho, Moutinho yes. you know, people like that. You know, people who have been there, they are, they've played at more tournaments. And they're really, really the same squad that always, you know, travels, you know. And you know, their head coach has been a mainstay. Yeah. He's been with them for quite a while. Yeah, and he's so won. So he understand the dynamics and intricacies. Yeah, and he's won a couple of football. trophies with them. So, you know, that's a really big plus. It also might be his last tournament with Portugal. He's done a lot. But, you know, people, will, their eyes will always be, even if Brazil are the favorites, people will always look at Cristiano versus Messi because if they don't get this, you know, if one, one of them gets this, you know, they are guaranteed best player of all time. So, you know, it is down to those two teams if they can make something of their tournament. You know, during previous World Cups, Argentina had a huge and massive depth in terms of, you know, the squad of players they possessed. You remember their attacking department led by, you know, Besides, of course, Lionel Messi, they had uh, Higuain. Higuain, they had, you know, Sergio Kun Aguero. Yeah. Plenty Tavis. of, you know, players mm. 
yeah. who can be relied upon. But this time around, besides Lionel Messi, who else you remember Angel Di Maria? Yeah. Who else? Because I'm sure yeah. uh, Cristiano Ronaldo and <laughs> Lionel Messi for Portugal yeah. and Argentina respectively, yeah. they will get to be man-marked. So yeah. they are got to be a player besides yeah. the two who yeah. you know can maximize and make well use of the available chances and score. Yeah, Is yeah, there yeah. anyone for Argentina? I think Argentina will really, really miss Dybala up front. I think their, their best their best department, if you look at it right now, has to be defense center backs especially because you look at Otamendi with Benfica, you look at Romero. He's 34, 35. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's old, but He's you, know, you, you look at their performances in the Champions League, you're like, this guy is not, he, he uh -huh. has 20-something. Uh, Romero, when he plays for Tottenham, they look better defensively and there's also... Martinez, Lisandro, who's, you know, he flies into every tackle and shows a lot of passion. That's their best department. But up front, I think the, the honest will always be on Lionel Messi, regardless of who's playing right now. Because, you know, I feel like if Aguero was there, it would have been easier. But right now, everything has to be on Messi. But, you know, the, the couple of scores that were being called, you know, before the, 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 the Premier League resumed, you know, uh, Alejandro Garnacho was being involved. And, you know, he's, he's now being involved a little bit more in Man United. So, you know, he might get his chance there because he's a really, really top player. They rate him highly in, in Argentina. They really like him. Yeah, so even with this goal in the Europa League, I think his chances are getting bigger and bigger of him getting a game time at, at, at the World Cup. And I saw the 11 players mm. who are missing in action, the best of... You know, 11 players who are out injured and mm. in case they start, they can even win the FIFA World Cup. Mm. In terms of, you know, standout names that will be missing in action, either injured or probably their respective countries didn't qualify for FIFA World Cup. Of course, besides Kevin uh, Haaland, yeah. who is doing very well for Manchester City. I don't know who, who will be, you know, the key figures, very instrumental to their clubs and they will be missing in action for FIFA World Cup in Qatar. I think it will be great for Liverpool to have Salah not go to the World Cup. Ah. I think that's that's a really, really uh, important thing for them. And also for Chelsea, you know, Jorginho this time will be, will have to train the whole month, you know. <laughs> to yeah. convert penalties. Yeah, and also now it's we have to look at Spain. PK is retired, you know. Thiago, will he make it? You know, he's been struggling with the injury. If he keeps playing, will he get injured again? And also, you know, Spain released their squad and the manager decided to leave the hair out. So, you know, you just have to wait and see because I feel like if the hair could have gone to this World Cup, you know, he could have made it his last and made something of it. But it's, it's unfortunate because he does not have the quality that Enrique desires because he wants a ball playing goalkeeper who's great in the air, but he, the hair is only really, really amazing at making saves and the other qualities are not his best. So, you know, he'll miss out, but, you know, if he's in that lineup of the best players to miss the World Cup, you know, he, it's a team that can win if you have the hair, Salah. Let, let's play FIFA World Cup is meant for a specific type of players because uh, previously we've missed, you know, show, watching quality players. Robert Lewandowski, yeah. uh, while he was at Bayern Munich, his respective team Poland not making through. So I think sometimes it's uh, an opportunity for us to get to watch, yeah. you know, certain players showcase yes. their prowess. But let me try show you this injured world cup best 11 mark magnan yeah. the one you mentioned about for france and featuring for AC milan yeah. and of course in the defense we have Ravel varane who is doubtful to get full recovery before fifa world cup starts then ronald araujo of uruguay yeah. then of course we have rich james yeah. on the right back then bell chilwell on the left back uh, in the midfield we have nkolo kante and Paul Pogba alongside Jujino Wilnadam. He's also injured. Yeah, he's, he was injured uh, two months ago. Two months ago. Roma. That's why he's not been yeah, uh, for much Roma. seen for... Is he still at PSG? Uh, yes, Roma. Yes, yes Roma. Roma. He yeah. moved to yes, Roma. Then, uh, striking, we have Diego Jota, Timo Vanna, and Son also is injured. Yeah, I think he had his face uh, in their last game, but he's a doubtful. But I don't think South Korea will want Son to miss the World Cup because of a facial injury. I think they'll still want him there because he's a very, very important player. And he also the front, someone like Jota will be a big miss for Portugal. Yes. But you know Portugal's big guy will always yeah, be Ronaldo. Yeah, yeah. 
and Joao Felix has not been at the top, the best shape uh, in terms of club football. His club is really struggling. So you look at the players you've mentioned, they are really, really important players. Wijnaldum, this would have been like... Uh, in 2014, he had his first chance, but 2018, Netherlands missed out. Now they are back, but even if you look at their squad without Wijnaldum, you know, they still can make something of it because they have great technical midfielders, Martin De Roon and uh, Frankie De Jong. They can always replace him. Uh, the biggest misses will obviously be for England and France because they are the ones who are missing two players in one department, you know. Yeah, I feel like that, that will be the biggest miss, So especially for France, because Pogba... Pogba and Kante have been uh, great servants for Didier Deschamps, so they'll, they'll totally feel their absence. So obviously most football fans looking forward to the upcoming FIFA World Cup in Qatar are closely keeping tabs and monitoring their respective you know, footballers at club level who are set to replicate yeah. their glittering form. But you know World Cup has got its dynamics. Yes. You uh, got her to play in a tournament that you probably will fail to showcase what you've been doing at the club level. But in yeah. terms of, you know, those standout names who have been doing very well in various elite club uh, football competitions, who are these that are likely to continue with the same magic at the international football? Yeah, you have to say Neymar, of course, you've been seeing them with PSG. Neymar Mbappe and Messi. And more of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, obviously, you know, last World <laughs> that Cup. That is was, him. Yeah, last World Cup, it was a really big issue, especially when they played Mexico and Every touch he'd get, he'd roll on the, on the ground also. And he'd, he'd have a lot of skills and it, he'd, he'd sort of reel in the defenders to kick him. You know, it's also a ta tactic to win matches, you know, but no one likes to see that. We know he's a great player even if he does all the showboating, you know. He doesn't have to do that. But uh, you look at Neymar, Messi and Mbappe, they've been very important for PSG. Uh, you, you, you look at Lewandowski for Barcelona. Now he's a very, very important player for Poland. He's never had that sort of Poland career that he wanted, but it will be very important. Karim Benzema, obviously, is there. Alfonso Davies for Canada, really, really important one. And, uh, yeah, Harry Maguire for England. <laughs> <laughs> it be important also. So. How about the novices? Probably those uh, said to take part for the first time, making their debut at FIFA World Cup, and uh, they can cause magic. Because it's also, you know, a market opportunity for players to sell themselves to world-class uh, football clubs. Because you remember uh, this guy, Andrei Shevchenko, in yeah. 2000 FIFA World Cup while playing for Ukraine. That is the moment that got him to be noticed by Liverpool that, you know, Kumbe, this boy can play yeah. high-profile football. Yeah, yeah. And uh, also, I, I think uh, for the guys who will be taking part in their first World Cup, I think the, the youngsters for yes. England are really important because you look at someone like Jude Bellingham, you know, He's been having a great season at Dortmund, but, you know, look at the whole world. How many Dortmund games are watched, you know? You can see the stats on social media, but have you watched him play? So I think it will be really important for him and Phil Foden because it's also his ah, first, yeah. you know, to look at how good these players are away from great teams. Because Foden, it's, it's easy to play for Man City, you know, with all the quality around you. But away from Man City, because he's not been doing that great for England, I think this stage will be different for him to see what he can really, really give. Wow, of course, that's a preview of what is expected to happen in Qatar. The tournament starting in a few days from now as we speak and, of course, getting televised by our mother channel, KBC Channel. And a total of 28 games will be broadcast live. And, of course, you got to enjoy the proceedings of the game at the comfort of your sitting room and 64 matches in total getting aired on our radio stations across a platform. So, of course... Keep talking to us and join the conversation as well. Hashtag touchline 254 at Wasike Maxwell at Ken Andrew. Let's see which team are you rooting for as far as FIFA World Cup is concerned. I've already declared mine England, which, you know, disappoints me when it matters most. Ken, of course, is rooting for, you said France or Argentina? Brazil, Brazil. Brazil. Oh, the five-time World Cup champions and at some point getting demolished 7-1 by Germany. You remember? No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a short break. We're coming back next with the fans on where we give a focus to what is said to happen as far as European club football matches and tomorrow, Chelsea, Arsenal. Don't go, stay tuned. <laughs>